All right, guys, today we are going to talk about how to examine the table, particularly after a break. Um, we're just going to do a quick break and run here, and then we're going to go over four table scenarios. Okay, we actually have a fairly hard situation here. Uh, I don't have any great shot on high ball, nor do I think it's the right one for the run out at this point. Uh, and I'm going to start with the three ball to give myself a shot here. Take it off the rail. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. I think I got perfect on the deuce. Okay, we're still going to have to deal with that one ball. And here, let's hope for a good kiss here. Yeah, that's very good. I didn't over, over hit it or anything, so. Um, I think we'll play out for the six ball now. Then we have a pretty easy one and eight ball finish, all right? All right, so let's look at some more break examples and why I chose solids low ball in this situation instead of choosing high ball stripes, okay? How do we see the table right after the break? Okay, what do we look for? Let's get into it. First table example, my opponent broke dry, all 15 balls are on the table. Yes, this is an eight ball situation, okay? Uh, first thing you do after a break or when you get up to the table, if your opponent breaks dry, walk around the table and examine things. If you are able to run out a table, examine everything. Don't spend 15 minutes examining everything and then miss your opening shot. <laughs> but examine the problem areas, okay? Like, for instance, because I walked around the table, I noticed that this combination is pretty much wired for this pocket, okay? It goes for about right here. But with a little bit of throw, if you cut the 10 this direction, it'll throw the 14 right in the heart of the pocket, okay? So first thing I always tell my students is you have to take what the table gives you, okay? So in this situation, I do have a good starting ball on low ball, and I do have two good starting balls on high ball stripes, okay? So that's not really an issue. I do have starting balls. The next issue is a pattern, okay? If I take this, can I get pretty easy shape on my next solid ball? Not really, okay? Not without juicing things and trying to hope for, uh, you know, good bounces and playing a long draw shot to get down in here. And, and yes, it can work, but it's not the most natural pattern, okay? I personally like high ball stripes better in this situation because this combo is pretty much wired Okay, because I walked around the table, I checked it out, all right? So some of you, if you did take high ball, would probably say, hey, I'll just take this 12, I'll, I'll just put a little draw on it, and then I'll, I'll come right back here for this position where I can take the nine and then roll up for the 11. <laughs> Why? Doing a six to eight inch draw shot is actually fairly difficult to judge, all right? It's a lot easier to get six feet than it is to get uh, six inches, <laughs> okay? So if you're a little short on this, 
or you're a little long, now you don't have the right angle on the nine to the side, okay? And therefore, this becomes a harder ball to get onto, the 11, all right? So I am gonna start with the nine. I'm not gonna run the table out. I'm just gonna take the first pattern and let's see how it looks, okay? So I am gonna take the nine to the side and just roll it up. Okay, a little angle, that's not bad. Not bad, a little bit, of, maybe a little too much angle, but we can make that work, all right? So, then the 11, and then the 12, and then I'm actually gonna try to take this combo because I don't wanna save this combo for last. <laughs> I wanna keep the 15 and the 13 up before I take this combo, okay? Because you never know what's gonna happen with the first ball in the combination, okay? So, let's just take this right now. Okay, nice little soft draw shot. Okay, now we do have some traffic here in the center, so I'm gonna have to try to play. Um, this is a bigger window over here. I might try to come into there. Uh, and just in case I don't, I am gonna have the 13 ball to bail me out, okay? Perfect. Okay, we got this window really nice. So now, we can pretty much just hit this 10 ball straight on and we should be able to get that 14 ball and throw it into the pocket, okay? The next ball is probably going to be the 13. No, nope. in this situation, I would take the 10, 13, 15, and then we'd finish off with the 8, okay? You see how we saw, I'm not going to finish it, but you see how we saw the pattern in advance okay and if you're an advanced player you should be able to spot a pattern like that on a fairly open table now if you would have taken low ball <laughs> i think your chances to run out would have been a lot smaller let's check out the next example so after you look at what the table gives you you examine number two your problem areas and the third thing that i'd like to look at is which balls have inside position to the pockets okay these two low balls are tied up, but they do have inside position to this pocket over this 14. This 14 is pretty much completely messed up. These are messed up, but as I'll show you in a second, there is a bit of a solution for this, okay? Yes, all the other high ball stripes look good. Pretty much all the other low ball solids look good, okay? This is a fairly easy combo. And uh, this one is tied up, and these two go. And the eight is in a pretty doable position. In this situation, if I'm going for the runout, um, I'm going to choose low ball, okay, solids. If I'm not going for the runout and it's going to be a multi-inning game, maybe I'll choose high ball, <laughs> okay? If I'm a lower skill level player and I'm just after getting points or I'm I uh, just want to get closer to the eight ball, maybe get stuck on the 14 or something like that, or try some kind of crazy, like a bank on the 14. Sure. Okay. But if I want the run out, I see a better pattern for solids low ball. Okay. Particularly because I walked around the table and I noticed that I have a nice perfect angle right now on this four ball to probably get a breakout on these two. Okay. So I'm going to deal with the problem early. I have an opportunity right now. If I didn't have this opportunity, I may not take low ball, okay? But it looks like I have an easy breakout situation here, okay? So let's check this out. I'm just going to play follow. All right. Okay. So now, how does solids look, okay? I easily got a shot on the one which will probably give me a shot on the two after, okay? If not, I would have the five or the six, either one, okay? And I always got that combo. I do probably, um, I probably want to take this combo with at least one other ball on the table, okay? One other backup ball. So I don't want to make all four of these and be left with these two necessarily. However, that is a pretty easy combo. And it's probably pretty easy to play shape on the seven after making the three, okay? So that's why 
I chose solids in this situation. I saw a nice pattern. I saw this was the only big problem here. And there was an easy solution right off the bat to take that and to get it out. Highball stripes could have definitely worked too. I just would have had to have found a way how to get from one of these balls onto this to probably get it out. Okay, or go for a bank side after this one was moved <laughs> and it's gone now. So. so what are problem balls, okay? It's not just balls that are tied up. As you can see on this table here, we don't have any balls that are tied up and don't go. Every ball technically goes, but there is another problem zone that you really don't want um, balls uh, in that position, and that is within um, one diamond of the side pockets frozen to the rail, especially when you're only two to four inches away from the side pockets. These become hard shots. They're hard to bank, they're hard to cut, <laughs> okay? And the nine ball, I don't even have a cut because the six ball is blocking it, okay? So a lot of you players will just say, well, it's a no-brainer. I got, you know, three ducks on high ball stripes sitting in pockets. Of course, I'm gonna take that, <laughs> okay? But you're gonna be left with nothing on those two balls. Those two balls are problem balls, okay? They're, like I said, they're difficult to bank, they're on the rail, and they're close to the side pocket. So you got difficult, difficult angles for the bank sides, and you got very difficult runs to the corner. Problem zone, okay? So I consider that just as much of a problem as if there was a ball tied up in that area, okay? Um, or tied up somewhere else, like over here or whatever. So just, just, as, just as much of a problem, okay? So yes, I would start with solids in this situation, okay? Um, so I'd probably start with the seven in the side. And um, I think I would just draw it back about an inch so that I can take the three, take the one, and then I'm going to be down on that end of the table, okay? So let's see here. Okay, we drew it back about three inches, four inches, but it's perfect. Okay, and we have the three. Okay, Ooh, I did leave myself a little straight on this. Ah. Okay, so I did collide with that. So in this case now, we have to take the five. Oof. And we missed it, okay? My problem was I left myself a little too straight on that one. I collided too clean on the 14, held the cue ball down here, left myself a difficult shot on the next one. Nonetheless, that still was the right pattern to take, in my opinion, was solids, okay? Because I definitely would have got hung up on these. And now my opponent still has to deal with this crap. Um, I did leave my opponent, uh, well, I guess that does cut to the side. So my opponent is gonna have to now work to try to get onto these. I still believe I'm going to get another shot this game, okay? And I have enough balls still on the table that my opponent can't really play an easy safety on me, okay? so. Anyway, guys, so that helps with picking the suit, solids or stripes, um, what to look for, okay? Examine your problem areas, deal with your problem areas as quick as you can, and look for the pattern that gives you the option to, um, to deal with those problems right off the bat, okay? Because sometimes there is no solution to get to those problem balls, at least not an easy one. <laughs> and I'm not talking about bringing the cue ball around three rails and doing some kind of Hail Mary breakout. I'm talking about common sense uh, solutions to deal with the breakout clusters and stuff like that, okay? Choose the pattern that has the best chances to get those uh, solutions to those problems fixed, all right? Um, I'll look at one more quick uh, scenario, and it's not going to be a run-out scenario. It's going to be a multi-inning 
uh, game because there, there'll be too many problems. Check it out. All right, check this out, guys. I broke. I made three highball stripes, okay? And it's open. I don't have a shot on stripes, <laughs> okay? Not a big deal, okay? Um, I have a shot only on uh, the three ball. I can see about half the pocket, and I got a shot on the five ball, okay? So this happens all the time, guys. You got to take what the table gives you. However, I have two clusters here where the balls don't really go anywhere. Now, these are set up for good defense lockup shots, okay? So I look at that as a pattern and I, I say, I've got two options, two um, good options here to freeze up to balls, make a legal shot and freeze up to the ball, try to get a lockup safety, okay? Because if I can get a ball in hand, even one ball in hand from a foul, uh, I have a good chance of running out these low balls, okay? Because uh, if I did get a ball in hand off this, I'd probably take this to the side, crack that up, play shape on the three, all right? So there's definitely options if I can get a ball in hand. So let's see if I can get a bit of a lockup safety right off the bat here, okay? I'm gonna take the five with a bit of draw. All right, perfect. Now, let's see if I can freeze up to the backside of that six ball. Okay, not bad. Yeah, my opponent is hooked on everything. I didn't quite freeze up to the uh, backside. I needed to hit a little bit harder and come like that. But, you know, but even where I was, uh, my opponent has no straight shot. They're going to have to mass A, do a hard jump, um, or kick. All right? So I have a chance now of getting a ball in hand. So sometimes clusters can be good safety opportunities, okay? And you also have to take what the table gives you. If I had a shot on stripe, yes, I would have took a shot on stripe. They're all open okay so have but i have to take what the table gives me okay so i have to take a low ball in this situation and when i have low ball in this situation i need to find the best possible solutions okay i gotta make a lemonade out of lemons right? so when you have some clusters like this yes great safety opportunities guys okay okay like if something like this here Okay, this is another great safety opportunity. Bang, freeze up to that four ball. Okay, mm -hmm. I didn't quite get to the back side of it. They might be able to see this one. I thought it was right there. Okay, now that's a, uh, it's not quite a lockup safety because they can still kick pretty easy and probably hit a ball. But nonetheless, those become good opportunities to leave your opponent difficult. And they're going to have to really work to get out um, when you play those types of safeties. All right. See you at the next lesson, guys. Let's learn.